So the New York Times has a chilling report on what a Navy SEAL is responsible for doing. And um, do yourself a favor here and hang in until the end because there's a devastating update to this story that you're not going to want to miss. So take a look. Navy SEALs were warned against reporting their chief for war crimes. Stabbing a defenseless teenage captive to death, picking off a school-age girl and an old man from a sniper roost, a sniper's roost, not sure I've ever seen that word before, indiscriminately spraying neighborhoods with rockets and machine gun fire, Navy SEAL commandos from Team 7's Alpha Platoon said they had seen their highly decorated platoon chief commit shocking acts in Iraq. And they had spoken up repeatedly, but their frustration grew as months passed and they saw no sign of official action. Tired of being brushed off, seven members of the platoon called a private meeting with their troop commander in March 2018 at Naval Base Coronado near San Diego. According to a confidential Navy a confidential Navy criminal investigation report obtained by the New York Times, they gave him the bloody details and asked for a formal investigation. But instead of launching an investigation that day, the troop commander and his senior enlisted aide, both longtime comrades of the accused platoon leader, Special Operations Chief Edward Gallagher, warned the seven platoon members that speaking out could cost them and others their careers, according to the report. Whoa, they go on. Two SEAL snipers told investigators that one day from his sniper nest, Chief Gallagher shot a girl in a flower print hijab who was walking with other girls on the riverbank. One of those snipers said he watched through his scope as she dropped, clutching her stomach, and other girls dragged her away. Another day, two other snipers said the chief shot an unarmed man in a white robe with a wispy white beard. They said the man fell, a red blotch spreading on his back. Now, he also went on to murder somebody with a hunting knife, so they think that this guy's a terrorist, there's a firefight, they injure the guy, then they capture the guy. The guy's like sitting in the medic tent, surrounded by medics, and there are other uh, Navy SEALs there. This dude walks up, takes out a knife, repeatedly stabs him in the neck, kills him, then takes a picture of him, sends it to his buddy, and brags about it. So, uh, this, this is a long article. You should read it for yourself. I'll leave, the, leave it in the video description box. I just gave you some key portions that really impacted me. Um, and it's a maddening story, because what you see is there were some Navy SEALs who were like, Whoa! Whoa! And, because this guy wasn't, he was so unhinged and so savage that even though the culture of the Navy SEALs are like, hey, these are your brothers, and you defend them at all costs, it was so egregious and so over the line that they were like, I, I mean, we have to, we have to do something about this. So they went up the chain of command, and every time they went up the chain of command, they were basically told, fall in line and know your place. And then the only reason we even learned about this, and the only reason why this guy was caught eventually and he was arrested, is because they said, listen, if you don't act on this, we're number one going to the highest possible level in the Navy. I don't know what that is. The Admiral? I, I really don't know, to be fair. Um, we're going to the highest top brass in the Navy. That's point number one. Point number two is, we're going to the media. Like, we're going to tell the media everything. And so it was only at that point that they got him. And it, what's amazing is that they submitted in evidence, you see, this dude literally had text conversations with uh, other people where he bragged about murdering people. Like I said, he took a picture of the guy he murdered who was sitting on the table. But on top of that, there were just endless stories about he literally killed a a woman walking, minding her business in a flower hijab, just murdered her. Murdered an old man for no reason. He did it all the time. He did it all the time. He was ordering, you know, some of them say, when they were engaged in a mission, 
he would just point to random houses and be like, hit that house with a rocket launcher. And they'd be like, what? And he'd be like, hit it with a rocket launcher. And, you know, they don't know. There are civilians inside. I don't know. Maybe. Probably. But he would just say, yeah, I don't know. Shoot that. He would go shoot across the river and just light everything up with the machine gun. The dude is, he's barbaric. He's savage. He's genuinely unhinged. Genuinely a murderer. He's just a murderer. He's a brutal, vicious murderer. He's a terrorist because he's killing for political reasons. Because we're there for political reasons. So I don't... A, a little part of me was like, oh, thank God there were other Navy SEALs who were like, we gotta fucking stop this guy. But then the other part of me was like, but exactly what I thought would happen is what happened, where they were stonewalled at every layer. At every level, they were blocked by their higher-ups, and the higher-ups protected the murderer. And how much of this is going on that we don't even know about in the military? So this is one story that broke through because this guy was too egregious. But how many similar cases where maybe there's somebody who's not as brutal and upfront about it as this guy, but there's like, you know, he's half as brutal as this guy. And he's killed civilians, but, you know, he's not, you know, bragging about it and, and showing pictures and, and killing women who are obviously innocent civilians. How many of them are just killing males of a certain age who happen to be innocent civilians, but it's enough, there's enough plausible deniability where the people in the unit go, eh, you know, whatever, it was probably, probably a bad guy. Like, how much of that is really going on? And then, you know, it hits you. Well, this is how we got a situation where you had minimum, minimum, 200,000 innocent civilians killed in Iraq. That's minimum. Estimates go up to a million. This is how you get a situation like that. Because you do have people like this who join the military because they have a fucking bloodlust. And then they get sent to these countries which did not attack us. They're illegal and offensive invasions, violating international law. And they do stuff like this. See, this is what happens, by the way, when, when you get to a point where you're so drunk on American exceptionalism that you truly believe that, well, no, we're the good guys by definition. So it almost doesn't matter what we do. We know we're on the right side. We know, yeah, we sort of mean well, right? And so then you do stuff like this and they don't realize, like, wait, we're the baddies here. We're the evil ones here. There's a line that's been crossed. Illegal and offensive wars and then wantonly murdering civilians on purpose. That's as bad as it gets. That is as bad as it gets. It, it, it's really hard to wrap your mind around how terrible this is. So, in response to this guy being arrested, and by the way, should he have been arrested? How are we even having this conversation? They're just endless examples, example after example after example. He murdered an old man who was walking, minding his business. He murdered a woman in a flower hijab. He murdered somebody sitting on the fucking medic's table and took a picture of it and bragged about it. Again, the list goes on and on. I'm just giving a few examples. I, you know, I would shudder at the thought. How many people did this guy actually murder in total in his career? It's got to be hundreds, right? At least. At least. So they arrest him. You know what happens? Fox News says to the family, oh, come on. Come on, air. And they start acting like he didn't do anything wrong and he's a hero. He's a veteran. He's a military veteran and he served this country honorably. They literally go on Fox News and they start arguing that this guy's a hero. They open up, you know, a, a fundraising page for this guy's uh, defense. It's raised at least 375000 375000 as of the time I read the article. That was days ago. This probably is well above that now, but at least $375,000 has been raised for this guy's defense fund when he's a, a brutal, savage murderer. They, and they also have apparel. They sell free Eddie t-shirts. Because again, his name was Chief Edward Gallagher. Now, I told you to hang in here till the end because there's an important um, update to the story. There are reports that are coming out now that Donald Trump will pardon him.
these are people who are drunk on the idea of American exceptionalism. No matter what we do, we're the good guys. Just so you know, another term for exceptional is supreme. So another term for American exceptionalism is American supremacist. And if you're an American supremacist, that means you very clearly do not believe in equality. Equality means we're all equal. You know, somebody in Thailand is worth the same as myself and as you. That's equality. We're all equal. Certainly should be equal under the law. If you believe in American supremacism, you, by definition, do not believe in equality. And these are people who are drunk on American supremacism. And they think, I don't know. We're in Iraq. It must be because we're the good guys and we're the world police and we're, we're trying to protect the world order or some goofy bullshit. It's certainly not about oil. Definitely not about oil. Definitely not about geopolitical dominance. Definitely not about that. But okay, we illegally and offensively invaded this country and pff, if I start picking off civilians with a fucking sniper and murdering people, what are you going to do? Obviously, I'm not a bad guy. I'm just a misunderstood good person who happens to partake in illegal offensive invasions where I murder civilians on purpose. No, this is, if you can, for just a second, step back from the, the cultural brainwashing that we've all had being raised in this country, as most of my audience is, not all of you, but most of you, if you could take a couple steps back and go, okay, hold on here. Let me try to take away all my biases. Let me de-brainwash myself for a second. And let me just look at this objectively. You will walk away with that scary light bulb moment where you realize that Noam Chomsky is 100% right on foreign policy. And Noam Chomsky you know, says very clearly, hey, if the Nuremberg laws were upheld, every post-World War II president would have been hanged. Because we routinely violate international law do war crimes, and in the case of Trump, quite literally, will bend over backwards to defend the American supremacist terrorist murderers who took away the lives of innocent people minding their business. Listen, if you happen to believe, wow, well, what? No, they were bad enough. They were with the enemy enough. There is no other word for that but flat out bigotry and dehumanization. That's what that is. No, guilty enough, guilty enough, guilty enough. They're brown people, and they're in another country, and I don't need to think about it. It's all icky, okay, some bad stuff happened, but whatever. It, we meant well, so it doesn't count, doesn't count. Like I said, then you don't believe in equality. You don't believe in justice. You've sufficiently dehumanized these people, and you don't believe in people having consequences for their actions. Flip the script. China invades the U.S. with some cockamamie... Uh, rationale. They set up a base in Texas and then Chinese soldiers use snipers to pick off old people and women walking the street. And then the Chinese president says, let's pardon them. They did nothing wrong. We got a lot of work to do, guys. Because this is the norm. This is the way it works now. And we need to get back to a place of sanity and reason and morality and justice and ethics where it's we treat the law like it should be treated, which is we follow it as well. Nobody's above the law. That's the way it's supposed to work in theory. Nobody's above the law. So we need to actually abide by international law. Because when we don't, when we start cutting some corners, when we start, you know, doing illegal invasions here and there and the stuff like this happens and all of a sudden we should all be deeply, deeply ashamed of what our country's done with our money and in our name.